let me take you through the user interface of Affinity Designer. When you run the app, you're greeted with the welcome screen, and from here you can access the latest news, view various samples produced in Affinity Designer, view the tutorials, and also get access to the support forums and the social media channels. You can also close the welcome screen and go straight to create a new document as well. And if you don't want the panel to appear every time you start the app up, just simply uncheck this option down here. So I will go to view samples and open up one of these samples. Okay, so within the main interface, probably the most important area to cover is the concept of the personas. So think of personas as different workspaces for different tasks. For example, in Affinity Designer, you start in the main designer persona up here. And this is for vector-based editing. So all of your tools along the left here are vector-based tools. We then have the pixel persona, which is for raster-based editing. So notice the tools have changed here and you now have access to raster tools like the paintbrush tool. And finally, we have the export persona, which gives you finer control over how to export areas of your document. So you can export specific regions as slices. Okay, so let's move back to the designer persona and have a look at the tool sets. So along the top here, we have various tool sets performing different tasks. So for example, we can access snapping up here, which gives us snapping guides for when we're transforming objects around on our document. We also have force pixel alignment, which enables us to make pixel perfect designs. And then we have view options. So for example, we could turn on the outline view. And then also we have various geometry options, which are currently grayed out because we don't have any layers selected. Now let's look at the toolbar on the left. So if we hover over any particular tool, it will give us a tooltip explaining what the tool name is. And some of the tools have this little icon in the bottom right, which means they are grouped tools. So to access the group of tools, you can either click this little icon, or you can just long click on the mouse to access the flyout. Also here we have what's called the context toolbar, and this will change depending on the current tool you have selected. For example, if we have the pen tool selected, notice we have quite a variety of various options and modifiers relating to the pen tool. Again, if I select, for example, the rectangle tool, I have fewer options, but these are now just related to the rectangle tool. Then on the right, we have the panels, and these are grouped under what is known as a studio. So by default, we have a series of panels available to us, like swatches, the stroke panel, brushes, which contains all of our brush categories. And of course, we have the layers panel, and down here, other panels like the navigator and the undo history. But we can expose additional functionality by going to view, studio, and enabling additional panels. So for example, if we wanted to take advantage of the isometric functionality, we can enable the isometric panel here. And also, if we wanted to take advantage of symbols, which effectively are like linked layers, we can enable the symbols panel, and then we have access to that functionality. Finally then, I will just point out the preferences options and the help. So preferences is accessed under the title menu on Mac or the edit menu under Windows. And then we have various options available to us separated into categories. And then to access the in-app help, we can simply go to help and then choose the help option here. This will launch a help window and from here we can access all of the various topics and also perform a search using keywords. So there we go, just a quick overview of Affinity Designer's user interface.